Hey everybody, Karen Bryan here, and today I've got Val Woodburn kicking back with me. He, of course, is fighting at UFC 298, taking on Oban Elliott. And listen, that is a beautiful background. Where are you right now, Val? I'm home. It's my and backyard. that is in Florida, right? Yeah, this is Florida. Claremont, Florida. Nice. Okay, so listen, um, a few things, I don't know, I, I don't know if you know where we should start on this one. Um, first and foremost, I feel like even though people have met you, you've had one fight in the UFC so far, I feel like people have met you, but you know, it was so fast, it was against Bo Nickel, and I feel like this is now when we're going to get to kind of meet you. Does that, does that make sense to you, and does that feel kind of valid? Yeah, it makes sense a little bit. Well... I'm curious what that take was for you because you came in on short notice, notice to fight Bo Nickel, and everybody knows that Bo had all this hype and all this steam, and he's very, very good. You came in on five days' notice to fight him, and the fight didn't go your way. So, like, how was that whole experience for you? Uh, honestly, I can say um, I'm still living that moment. Uh, the moment was unreal, you know, just by um, coming to Vegas that Wednesday. After did with all the media, the walkout, and all that stuff, um, it's I still live that moment, you know. And I feel like having to take such a short fight on. Um, I even know I didn't even know it was international fight week until this day. I know having to take a short notice fight in such a big uh, platform at the time. I feel like there's nothing else they can throw at me that's gonna really have me really like nervous and scared besides me preparing to fight somebody that nervous is never going to go away but like the environment and what to expect you know what i'm saying I'm, I'm i'm all on board and i don't feel like nothing's going to shake me and make me nervous anymore besides me having to get rid of those jitters before i go to the cage at octagon okay so that that makes sense and i kind of want to like how how do we phrase this you know, it almost, in a way, it couldn't go worse. Does that make sense, right? To come in on short notice and to lose quickly. Like, and I say this with the greatest respect, like in a way it couldn't go worse, right? So there might be something nice about just having that out of the way. Mm -hmm. I got it out of my system. Yeah. Yeah, I got it out of my system. So now it's it's all up to me now to, to turn it around and um, make it an impact, you know, and give the fans something and show them, what I'm really capable of. <clears throat> yeah. How did that feel though? Because in a, in a lot of ways, um, you know, and, and uh, I believe Bo was supposed to fight Treshawn Gore or whatever, like with, with somebody like Bo having all that hype, a lot of people were like, well, whoever it is, is just brought in to lose. And did you, did you feel that way? Like, did you feel that people didn't even expect you to do anything? Uh, like, Fight wise, or yeah, I felt, um, the, the expectation was still there. That people was still expecting to go out there and win. Um, obviously, they go my way, but you know, just gotta move on from it and try to make the best of my other three fights that I have left on the contract. Well, yeah, of course, and I should mean obviously. I mean, I mean the Bo Nickel supporters that thought you weren't going to come in and do anything. Obviously, your team um, knows what you have going for you. So let's. Let's figure out what what would have been, you know, ideal for you in that situation because it was such a great opportunity. Um, yeah. What did you what did you what did you hope to do that time, and what are you hoping that you can actually implement on this one now that it's your second chance? Uh, this chance, I feel like I'm more prepared. I'm more like uh, dialed in. You know, um, I got my mm -hmm. feet in. You know, what I'm saying I'm on the roster now. I feel like I'm I'm here. Versus when I wasn't just, I was just the regional fighter coming off the scene, just taking a fight, you know what I'm saying? I was 7-0, you know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> nothing, you know, I, I just feel like I was going to go in and dominate, but I just know it's always, like I said, taking from this is always levels to this, and then I feel mm -hmm. like uh, I've learned that, and I'm honed in, and I'm real prepared this time to go back out there and show them that that I'm not just a 30 seconds fighter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I and you know and it's funny because I have spoken with people about this before. It's like on the one hand, you know, when you lose a fight so quickly, 
obviously it's frustrating because you put in a lot of work, but sometimes it's easier to, to handle because you're like, hey, I got I got caught. Like, you know, sometimes people yeah, think I that's easier caught. to take than than to have gone, you know, 15 minutes or 25 minutes and, and mm -hmm. to not win then. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I don't know what you I think mean, is worse, like a quick finisher or, or going all the way and not winning, you know? It just, you just got to, I mean, it was really tough the first yeah. two weeks. Especially the plane ride coming back home, but like, man, this is what we sign up for. This is what we do it. Um, it's MMA, man. So we just gotta. I I, I took it with a grain of salt, and then yeah. I, 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 um, when I say I took it with a grain of salt, I mean in a, in a in a good way, you know, turned into something positive, you know. Um, I got the opportunity, took advantage of it, and it go my way. So, you know, I got three more tri tries to go out there and do it, and to turn it around. So I'm, I'm really excited to go out doing, you know, for Anaheim on notice. <laughs> yes. Nice. Okay. So listen, so, um, this time you're fighting at welterweight, right? Though, is that, is that generally where you prefer to fight? Because obviously the fight with Bo was up at middleweight. Yeah. Um, just honestly, this fight, this, uh, this fight was a real, taking a fight with, um, Bo Nickel was really an eye opener too. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, making a switch from water, uh, middleweight to welterweight, and I'm saying it's gonna moving the welterweight. I feel like it's a, it's it's better for me moving forward, uh, career wise and mm -hmm. and stylist wise. You know, I just feel like it's a better opportunity for me, matchup wise, because at middleweight those guys are tall. It's not it's not like it's a strength or nothing like it. Just it, it just I, I, at middleweight I feel like I'm at a disadvantage at middleweight. Yeah. You know, in a way, you know, because I was looking at those mid midway. Yeah, we all big, but like, it's a big difference. You know, when you actually yeah. in there on that level, it's not like you're in a regional scene fighting to somebody who just ate a whole bunch of food just to be at middleway. You know, what I'm saying out of shape. But these are those these are actual midway fighters, and that really gave me an eye opener. You know, to make the transition. That's why I t I took so long to make my return because I wanted to make sure. Um, I make the right decision moving forward. That makes a lot of sense. And yes, those guys are really very big. And a lot of people yes. who are just sitting there watching on TV are like, eh, whatever, go up or down. And when you think about how many middleweights came down from 205 or whatever, like, yeah, that's... It's different when you're in there. Yes, I can believe it. I can believe it. I, I mean, I know for, I know I'm not in there, but I'm standing right next to these guys. So I 100% know. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's different. So I got to ask you, you know, um, I am half Jamaican. My mom is Jamaican, and um, I know you okay. are Jamaican as well, right? Wagwan. Wagwan, yeah. Wagwan. No, my mom is, uh, yeah, my mom is 100% Jamaican. So um, I'm not sure from? what you, she is from St. Mary. You know, her last name is uh, Walker. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wag -wag. Yeah. Big up on the yeah, yeah. So I've got Walkers and Lindos in my family, uh, and I okay. don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what part you're from in Jamaica. Linston, Bogwalk. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm curious too, like what your take is, because there's more and more Jamaicans. Now, obviously, Al Jermaine is too, but like Rude Boy, Randy Brown just picked hey, up a nice win the brother. other day, right? It's <laughs> nice. So we talked for years. We're like, we got to get a UFC Kingston or something like that. Um, but what does it mean to you? Like, do you do you feel a lot of support from the island and a lot of just uh, Jamaicans in general? Oh, of course, man! I got the whole nation behind me, man. Uh, I just it's it's so much it's just so much eyes out. It just they just yeah. really want to see me turn around and make a, a a bigger impact, you know. So you know, Jamaica it doesn't is MMA is still new to Jamaica. I feel mm -hmm. and I feel like we're here just putting it on and then say hey. We're some, we some. We got some tough uh, athletes in Jamaica. We lick them up with Talawa. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, at one point, we still have the Daily Gleaner there, right? That's still the paper, right? We'll get them to do a uh, yeah, a I'm big... on the <laughs> Gleaner, yeah. A big story on it. I love it. I think it's great. And look at you know. Um, <laughs> It's a small country, obviously, but look at stranger things have happened. We were getting UFC shows all around the world. It would be incredible. I mean, come on, it would be incredible. It would be great to. They would be great if we have a UFC show in Jamaica. That would be really great, and that would be really great for the country, the community, and everything. Because when we went back home, you know, I was trained with the kids there. There's so much talent there. They just don't have that platform to, to, to you know, to show it. You know. Yeah. Well, hopefully one day. Uh, I know Al Jermaine had talked about that, uh, too, and trying to get, you know, yeah, like get some sponsorship and do some things to open some gyms there because there's a lot of raw talent, like you just said. A lot of raw talent.
Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, listen, Val, uh, if you can sort of, if we could pretend that the Bo Nickel fight didn't happen and, and it's your intro here and you're like showing up for your first UFC debut or whatever, like, what do you want people to know about you on your best day? What kind of fighter is Val Woodburn? Val Woodburn is an animal. Val Wilber is an animal, and Val Wilber is always going to bring it, no matter what. No matter what happened in the past, you know what I'm saying? I was, I'm, I'm always going to bring it. And oh, I should say, they shouldn't sleep on me. Um, they shouldn't take. They shouldn't look at what happened with that bone nickel fight. Uh, they getting a whole different, upgraded um, fighter, a more focused fighter, more stronger, faster fighter. So I feel like I haven't lost a step. I feel like I've gained a step. And I feel like 298 is going to be one of the best shows and it's going to be one of the best one that I ever fought on and the best performance yet. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome. Well, really looking forward to it. And uh, thanks for taking the time today. And hopefully we see you one day fighting in Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, I'm one. Bless up. <laughs> yes, thanks, Val. Yes. Well. appreciate your time. appreciate you reaching out. Hopefully I see you anytime. Absolutely. Take it easy. Um, February 17th. All right, yes. have a good one. All right, yes, All February right. 17th, folks. He is on the prelims, but definitely check it out. Um, appreciate you kicking back. And, uh, yeah, just keep those hands up. Keep, keep you know, keep doing yeah, your thing. Sure. I love the hair. You're already, you know, like you already look like you're dialed in. Is it going to be that way on fight night or is it, are you going to oh, be punching it It's going to be this way. That's my image right there. That's the, you know, that's the. That's the, I like the red in there. I try to get the green to stick, but it won't stick. I don't know why. <laughs> but the red yeah. stick. So, yeah. All right. All right. Well, cool. Thank you for uh, for kicking back with me today. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, I think people are going to definitely see a good show on the 17th at 298. So thank you for, for hanging out with me. All right. Respect. Look up. Bless up. Bless up.